In this video, I'll show a variety of ways Frame Restorer can help with visual effects, footage prep and cleanup type work. In my day job as a visual effects artist, you can be asked to clean up or remove things from footage in literally any way you can imagine. Motion interpolation tools like Time Warp or Twixter can be incredibly useful for this, and the goal of Frame Restorer is to make it a lot more accessible. So we're going to start with something very simple here which is we have this footage and I've, I've shown this uh, in my other video a lot, but this is actually the original footage and um, the original issue with it, which is that it was stabilized and you can kind of see, if you look at the church, you can kind of see this flickering where the footage originally had kind of motion blur in it where there were jolts um, and then when it's once it's been stabilized you can still see the motion blur that um, that was originally there before it was stabilized so so this is um, what, what we're looking at in this video is the reduce function of frame restorer and what I've done, I've already gone through and I've marked, added layer markers on the frames where the um, kind of this motion blur is kind of noticeable. So hopefully that's, uh, it is a bit subtle, but hopefully you can see. There are some particularly bad ones, aren't there? Like here. So um, actually, for this, we're not using Reduce. We are actually using Restore for this. So I'm just going to use the Restore Marked Frames function. So we used Restore a lot in the other video for fixing um, damaged and missing frames. And essentially, these are damaged frames. So I'm going to select Restore Marked Frame and hit Apply. and uh, each of those frames has now been replaced with a new frame that's been interpolated from the from the good frames on either side. So if we watch that back now, you can see it's removed all those um, kind of motion blur jolts out of it. Okay, so that's that's a very simple bit of kind of cleanup work that it can be used for. So now we're going to move on to something a bit more fun and. Um, <laughs> This is me, so I apologize for staring at my ugly mug, but I uh, shot this earlier. I thought this would be a fun thing because I actually did a film where I had to stop one of the characters from blinking. And um, so I thought this would make quite an interesting uh, use for the reduce function. So what reduce does, again, it's motion interpolation, but it allows you to like, instead of just replacing the odd frame here and there, what it does is it allows you to replace all the frames between um, a section of frames that you choose. So in this case, we're going to use it to stop me from blinking. So let's go and find the first blink. Here it is. And we'll just find the first frame before that. And we'll add a layer marker and then we'll go after and add another layer marker. So we're going to use this reduce reduce to mark frames. And now in this case, we want both of these things turned on. We've got trim to markers. So we're only looking to create a patch between these two frames. And then we've also got this track footage motion. So you don't just want a linear interpolation from there to there because it won't sit on the shot properly. So we have this um, track footage motion where it takes use of After Effects' warp stabilizer effect to um, track the patch onto the shot. So in this case, when you're using track footage motion, when we hit apply, it will actually start analyzing using warp stabilizer. So it's created this new layer and um, you have to then wait for the warp stabilizer to finish analyzing the shot. So that'll just take a few seconds. It's only a few frames here.
Okay, so you should see that that is now that little section is nicely stabilized. So essentially, the, what the technique does is it stabilizes it and it interpolates between it, and then it applies the inverse of the stabilize. So once the analysis is complete, you hit apply again, and then it does the interpolation. So let's just have a look at that section. Let's turn the audio off. And now you can see no longer blinking. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So here we go. Blinking again. So uh, but yeah, I kid you not, I did have to do this on a film. But uh, I had to do it the manual, laborious way. So uh, this, um, again, as I said, Frame Restorer is all about me taking techniques I've kind of developed or learned over the years and uh, making them more accessible. So apply again. And um, so the reason we're doing this in separate sections is, is because we don't want it to then if we applied all the markers in one go, it would reduce between this frame to this frame as well. So we just want to do it in these little in these little patches. OK, so it's finished. Um, so it says warp stabilizer applied, ready to reduce. So let's do that again and have a look at that. And yeah, that blink's gone. And again, because it's um, using warp stabilizer, it is essentially tracking tracking the motion between those interpolated frames. So we've got one more. We'll just do do this one here as well. So I'm I'm moving these layer markers each time because I don't want it to again do those repeatedly. So okay, so. Let's do that again. So hopefully uh, you'll, you'll you'll be able to imagine that there are there are lots of ways that you can use this to create patches. There are lots of occasions where I don't know someone walks through shots and you've got a good frame on either side, but you know so you just want to create a patch to kind of fill in between, or you know it could be things slip out of focus so you just isolate that defocused area and create a reduced section in between okay so let's um, do that again okay so let's just watch that back all right let's I blink again let's um, I'm not going to do three is enough Okay, so, and I did, um, I've got one I did earlier, so that I've got a kind of direct comparison. Um, so you can see the um, before and after. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, okay, so what's next? Um, so kind of along the similar lines, again, another. Another way of using reduce, so this um, trusty footage, I've um, I've put this imagined kind of sheen on the roof. Like maybe it's like a giant solar panel and, uh, you know, the visual effects supervisor is like, we don't want that. Can you just kind of stop that from happening? So um, we're actually going to reduce this kind of whole section. And um, I won't start at the beginning because there is a still a motion blur dud frame at the beginning. But let's, uh, let's find a good frame. And I think we can go to the end. Now, There's a problem here, or at least a potential problem. This isn't going to work very well. I already know that, but let's apply it and we'll see why. And the reason is because in terms of tracking the motion, there's kind of lots of different motion in the shot. Everything's moving at kind of different speeds. And um, there's no reason that the warp stabilizer is going to know the region that we're particularly interested in. So 
you know, you can see from the stabilize that it's kind of a bit all over the place. And if I apply that again to create the patch, I mean, it's kind of, you know, there's lots of, you can see lots of motion interpolation artifacts and things. So, you know, this is not, this is not the way to do this. The way to do this is um, you can also use masks to help. So I'm just going to mask um, the region that we're interested in. And you can do this, you can use keyframes on this as well. So let's go to the end. So basically you're isolating the area that you want it to um, focus on or that you're trying to create a patch for. Okay, so that's that looks pretty good. So let's now we'll apply. And um, so now when it does the stabilizing, it's only going to be looking at that area and uh, hopefully should be able to do a much better job. Okay, so yeah, so you can see that's kind of nicely stabilized. And generally, if at this stage it looks pretty stable, then probably when you do the next stage, you should get a good result. So let's apply again. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so you can you can see the patch. I mean, obviously we need to uh, uh, do some kind of masking or some feathering on the masking to uh, blend it in, but you can see it's doing a pretty good job. It's not perfect. You can see some, you can see some, some issues here. And in fact, this is, um, we've not really touched on this yet, but this is an example actually where Twixter can do a better job than um, After Effects is built in Time Warp. So Frame Restorer supports doing motion interpolation either using Time Warp or using Twixter. And uh, sometimes Twixter will produce better results. So if I, if I just re re delete that last layer and I can go back to this one and um, just do the apply again, but this time using Twixter, now I've only got the trial of Twixter, but you can use the, the the trial version, and it just means that it'll put a watermark in. So, but it's still you know useful. You can like try it out, see if you're happy with the results. Um, you know, decide whether it's it's something that you want to buy. Um, but so you can see there, it's actually doing a much cleaner job of replacing the church, and so obviously that. Um, that sheen that we're seeing in the original uh, is is no longer there. But again, this is this is to be created as a patch. So there's going to be some some work to do in terms of blending blending it in. Typically, so um, finally we are going to look at the uh, clone option here and. Um, Again, we have this familiar footage that I've tampered with. And uh, I have put some very obvious dirt on it. Now, um, kind of dust and scratch removal is a pretty kind of standard type thing that you do in visual effects. Now, I'm not going to suggest that this is a, the, the go tool to tool for uh, dirt removal, but it has potential uses, so we're going to look at that. And um, so let's switch back to Time Warp and um, just simply create a clone source. And so what happens here is, again, using motion interpolation, it every single frame is recreated from the two frames on either side. And so the idea being that, um, so let's find, uh, so say this bit of dirt up here, for example, obviously these are kind of magnified to make them easier to see. But so the idea is if we look at this clone source, that is not on there because this frame is being created from 
this frame and this frame. So we can use it as a clone source, but if we looked at it and looked at the frame before and the frame after, these frames are now being created from the two frames either side, one of which is the frame that has that blemish. So that's why this clone source thing is only supposed to be used as kind of spot repairs. And it just makes an alternative to kind of clone stamp um, time offset. So you might do a clone stamp with a minus frame offset. So this is kind of a, an alternative to, to doing that. Um, so let's um, select the clone tool and we want it to duration single frame. And for the source, we want to set this clone layer. So we need to open the this in the footage um, in the layer window so we can do the painting. And then we're just going to go through and paint out these bits of dirt. You can see them. This one. So, you know, because these frames are interpolated, there's a good chance that the, the texture that you're trying to clone through is going to be in the right place. So rather than when you do a like one frame offset clone, you'd kind of then have to keep on turning on the clone source overlay and then offsetting the clone to line up the texture correctly. Um, but this, you know, there's, there's a high chance that the texture underneath is already going to be in the right place. So you just, you don't need any offset and you can just, you know, go through and paint it out. So again, I'm not trying to suggest that this is some miracle that will always work and make this kind of stuff easy because it's always painful, but anything that can potentially make it less painful uh, is, you know, I'm, I'm all for that. So we're nearly done here. I'm just going to go through and do all of these. Why not? Um, so it's kind of like the reduced patches we were just looking at. You wouldn't want to use it to like to replace the full image um, because if you're reducing down to that many frame, that few frames it's it's going to have all kinds of motion interpolation artifacts all over it somewhere but um in kind of spots uh it can be really useful there's i've seen there's one still here where is it there it is oh there's one where's that one there it is okay Right, so that's um, incredibly simple. Clone source, select the layer, create a clone source, use it with the, the clone tool as a source, and, uh, and off you go. Okay, so that's the end of this tutorial. Uh, there's also a tutorial where you can, uh, where I explain how you can use Frame Restorer to fix um, damaged, dropped, duplicate, missing frames and another one where we will look at removing light flicker from shots. Uh, but that's the end of this one, so thanks for watching.